Trump and Biden blow for blow, both men in Iowa tonight. They've been trading barbs all day, and they are both expected to take the stage any moment. And before the president left Washington today, Trump was already up and running, attacking Biden. I'd rather run against, I think, Biden than anybody. Uh, I think he's the weakest mentally. And I like running against people that are weak mentally. I think Joe is the weakest up here. The other ones have much more energy. I don't agree with their policies. But I think Joe is uh, a man who is, I call him 1% Joe, because until Obama came along, he didn't do very well. Trump referring to Biden's last showing in the Iowa caucuses. But Biden is doing well right now. You see on the screen in a new poll today, Biden topping Trump by 13 points, 53 to 40. And perhaps that's the reason the president is so fired up about Biden. As for Biden, it didn't take long for him to respond. He embraces dictators like Kim Jong-un, who's a damn murderer and a thug? Well, the one thing they agree on, Joe Biden, they shouldn't be president. He quotes, he quotes Kim Jong-un saying, I agree with him. He's right, he's right about Biden. I think I'm either low IQ or slow or I don't know what I am, you know. Slow Joe Biden? Give me a breath. I mean, it, this is like out of Alice in Wonderland. And just moments from now, both Trump and Biden are expected to take the stage. According to prepared remarks, Biden is going to mention President Trump dozens of times tonight. And he's already been talking about him all day. And he appears, frankly, to be doing it for an audience of one. Apparently, he had my speech on an Air Force One. Uh, I guess he, he really fascinated with me. Of course, if you listen to Trump, it is Biden who is fascinated with him. When a man has to mention my name 76 times in a speech, that means he's in trouble. Now, I have to tell you, he's a different guy. He looks different than he used to. He acts different than he used to. He's even slower than he used to be. So I don't know. But when he mentions my name that many times, I guess I should be complimented. Okay, Trump obviously trying to portray Biden as slow and aging every second he can, which is a surprising line of tack given that Biden is 76 and Trump will turn 73 on Friday. But Trump is trying to turn this into an issue for Biden only. And the idea of Trump questioning Biden's health may sound familiar if you watch Fox News. Joe Biden's tired. He does not have the energy for this. He's not, he, he's not up he's for not this angry. challenge. They're already hiding him like they hit Hillary. They don't Sean, want him out there. You start to go, you know, we haven't seen Joe a lot. Well, Maybe he's got some hidden health issues. It, oh, he's always wearing an overcoat. All right, I just want to say there are no known health issues. It's a baseless line of attack that worked for Trump in 2016, too. Folks, you think Hillary would be able to stand up here for an hour and do this? I don't know. I don't know. For one thing, she doesn't have the strength or the stamina. Here's a woman. She makes a speech for 15 minutes. She goes home, goes to bed. We have both Trump and Biden covered tonight with our reporters in Iowa. Caitlin Collins in West Des Moines with President Trump. Arlette Sines is in Davenport with, the, with Vice President Biden. Caitlin, let me start with you. The president is obviously very focused on Biden today. Yeah, he is. And these two men have been trading insults for weeks now, but things took a sharp and personal turn now that they're both here in Iowa. Even though, Aaron, they didn't even come face to face within the state, and in fact, they didn't even come within 100 miles of each other. But we know, based on our reporting, that the president has been phoning aides and allies in recent weeks, sometimes before 7 a.m., asking them if they think Joe Biden is going to be a real threat to him in the 2020 election. Now, that's not all, of course. There was that internal polling of the president campaign that showed him lagging behind Joe Biden in critical states that will be crucial to win in 2020, even though the president has sometimes doubted those own numbers, even though they come from his campaign. But of course, Aaron, what this all boils down to is the president is worried that Joe Biden could pose a threat to that blue collar voter appeal that he had in 2016 in critical primary states like Iowa. So that is why you're going to see the president continue to ramp up his attacks on Joe Biden, even though advisors have said, hey, you don't need to do that until he's actually the nominee. The president is making clear he's enjoying having this fight. You can expect him to continue to ramp up those attacks on Joe Biden, even while he's here in this room at a fundraiser with me tonight. All right, thank you very much, Caitlin. Let's go to Arlette. And Arlette, you know, Biden repeating the president's name over and over today, 
uh, what, it was 76 times when you counted use of the pronoun he. What is the strategy here? Well, Biden throughout the day, Aaron, has been going after President Trump. And this all plays into his general election strategy. Since day one, Biden has been trying to frame this as a campaign between himself and President Trump, trying to bra uh, draw in President Trump into some of these uh, debates, little battles back and forth with him. Biden has really refrained from engaging directly with his Democratic rivals. He's engaged, uh, refrained from engaging in those intra-party debates. And last week, he waded into that abortion debate as he switched sides uh, on that issue. But right now, what Biden is really trying to sell is, one, that he has the most experience uh, to lead the country, and two, that he has that ability to take on President Trump. And what the former vice president is banking on, he is betting that uh, voters are valuing electability and that they can see Biden in these fights engage, engaging with the president as someone who is willing to take on Trump directly. These criticisms and attacks are not going to let up, Aaron. All right, Arlette, thank you very much. And let's go now to Mark Preston, senior political analyst, former Senator Carol Mosley Brown, endorsing Joe Biden and Rob Astorino, a member of President Trump's 2020 reelect advisory council. So, Mark, uh, are both of them getting a bit ahead of themselves uh, with this preview of the general election tonight, right? Dueling rally, same time in Iowa, talking about each other all day. Well, a couple of things. One, if you are Joe Biden, if you are a Democrat running right now against 20 plus other Democrats, every day has to be an election day in the sense that you have to prove to your base that you are willing to take on Donald Trump head on. That's what we're seeing from Joe Biden, certainly in a state like Iowa that Trump won back in 2016, but Barack Obama had won it in 2008 and 2012. So Joe Biden doing it, he has to do it to stay relevant. On the other hand, Donald Trump in some ways is elevating uh, Joe Biden by spending so much time talking about him. He would probably be better served backing that off a little bit and just talking about his accomplishments. That would probably do better for him, but he just can't help himself. Aaron. So, Senator, I want to play something that Trump said today and something that Biden then said uh, in response. Here they are. That reminds me of Crooked Hillary. She did the same thing. And then when it came time to vote, they all said, you know, she doesn't like Trump very much, but what else does she stand for? Same thing's happening with Sleepy Joe. He's a sleepy guy. Eight years. Eight years. He will fundamentally change the nature of who we are as a country. Senator, do you worry that Biden is making this all about Trump? That Trump actually has a point, which is that if all you can do is talk about me and being in opposition to me, you're going to lose. Well, the point is, it, this, would be, this would be entertainment if it weren't so serious, if the future of the world were not at stake. And, and the fact of the matter is that we've got huge issues of everything from climate change to immigration to children being separated from their parents uh, uh, and, and what's going to happen with the middle class in this country. We've got these huge issues and these two guys are duking it out like you're on a schoolyard somewhere. Um, uh, I, I support Joe Biden because I know him to be a selfless individual who cares about working people, who cares about poor people, which I, which has always been my concern. Um, uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, he's the, the 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 contrast could not be more stark between someone who has been selfless in their dedication to helping everybody and another individual for whom it's all very personal. For the president, it's all about him. And it's all about what he cares about personally. And I think that, frankly, the American people deserve better. So, so Rob, look, here's the thing. Uh, a source familiar with the thinking of a lot of Trump advisors say, look, there's frustration uh, with the fact that he keeps talking about Biden, right? He's like, oh, Biden talks about me 76 times. Well, let's count his times. So, I mean, you're right. Okay, it's, it's a mutual fascination society, to use the president's word. Okay, is Trump making a mistake by elevating Biden? Or does he want to elevate Biden? Because he actually thinks Biden is weak, even though the polls do not show that. I think he shouldn't pay as much attention as he is, simply because I think he's got a great record to run on, and he should be touting that. In Iowa, for instance, he, he won 90... Work. Well, he won 93 of 99 counties last time and won the state for the first Republican to do so uh, in, you know, since 1980. The, the agricultural industry there is, is getting somebody who's actually doing something for them and renegotiating NAFTA, which Biden has to run on in a state like Iowa that hurt Iowans tremendously. And I also think Biden is not the strongest. Now, if you asked me that a month ago, I would have said he is. Now I think the true Biden is showing. The Hyde Amendment shows that he will do anything or say anything. If he stuck to his convictions on that, 
It might have caused him a little bit problem during the primary, but I think in the general election, he would have gotten more respect from people and maybe even some anti-Trump voters to find a home with him. But that's not there anymore.